Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to another review coming out of the Toronto International Film Festival 2023. And today I'm going to be talking about The Zone of Interest, directed by Jonathan Glazer, starring Sandra Huller and Christian Friedel, following the Nazi commandant Rudolf Hals as we follow him and his family's day-to-day -day goings uh, in their home outside the Auschwitz concentration camp. Yeah, um, so this is obviously Glazer's first film in about 10 years uh, since Under the Skin. And look, I appreciated that film uh, from a cinematic standpoint, but I found it to be long-winded and quite pretentious. Um, so, I, you know, I, I wasn't like a huge fan of it. And obviously going into this, well, this is a, a quite an interesting story. So I was trying to snag tickets uh, for this screening uh, at the Toronto International Film Festival. And the one big screening I couldn't make because I was trying to see Monster and there were many other factors going into it. And I obviously already reviewed Monster on this channel. And so I was looking on StubHub one night, or one day actually, because I saw that it said there was a ticket for like 400 something dollars. I'm like, hell no, I'm not paying that much. And then I don't know what overcame me, but I decided to go back later that night. And it said $43. And I was like, you kidding me? Like, yeah, I'm going to take it. Because this was one of the movies where I was like, if I can't see this movie at the festival, it almost felt like a deal breaker. But luckily, StubHub pulled through and I was able to get a ticket to see the zone of interest. And I, you know, I was a bit trepidatious going to this one because I knew it won the Grand Prix at the Cannes Film Festival, getting a lot, a lot of amazing buzz uh, from critics and and you know many, many people who saw it. And I was worried, you know, especially because I heard, oh, like people appreciated, but it was very, very slow, and they held on shots for uh, way too long. And if you guys don't know, uh, a film that I know a lot of people love that I am not a uh, Google Gaga for is Amour by Michael Haneke because I, although I appreciated the authenticity of how they displayed dementia, they would literally hold on a shot of old people walking for five minutes. Or at least that's what it felt like. So I was a bit worried uh, going in to this film that it would be something similar, especially because I didn't have the greatest uh, experience with Glazer's last film, though I would give it an overall positive score. Oh man, but this was a very uh, traumatic uh, film to watch, and I mean that in the best way possible, because I would say for a good three quarters of this movie, I thought this was the best film of the year. You know, seldom do I watch a film like this and get this type of feeling and engagement. The closest thing I can compare this to is when I saw Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey for the first time. I know it's like you're comparing that to a a uh, film that's taking place outside of a concentration camp. I know, right? But <laughs> hear me out. I think every single shot in this movie is so impeccably framed, so perfect. The cinematography from Lucas Zal is absolutely staggeringly good. Of course, who shot uh, Paul Palkowski's films and got nominated for Ida and Cold War. And really, if this does not win Best Cinematography, like, I'm out. Uh, this is easily the best shot movie of the entire year, and I can't see how this would even lose. Even the way he shoots these wide tracks following these characters is absolutely incredible. Like, just this is top-notch work. Uh, maybe some of the best cinematography I've seen since, like, Roma, even. I, I really think it is unbelievable. The framing, everything about a cinematography is amazing. And also, I have to give a huge shout-out uh, to Mika Levi for their score on this film because this is easily one of the best scores of the year, and I hope it gets an Oscar nomination because although it's used in the film very seldomly, I'd say... Uh, against its almost uh, two-hour runtime, they used music like seven times, 
but it is some of the most haunting, uh, evocative music that I've heard in any movie all year, and just in general uh, when it comes to music, some of the uh, craziest I've heard uh, all year, and, and it's the way they insert in the film, they put it in the greatest moments of despair and it just sticks with you and it swells the it's just unbelievable how just terrifying this music is and i really think it should be one of the front runners to not be nominated but also win best original score uh, absolutely stunned by the work here but really glazer as a director is really uh one of the things i am impressed by the most because obviously if it weren't for him and his very careful, cold, restrained approach, this movie would probably not work. Because what he's doing here, he isn't humanizing these people. I, I suppose he is in a sense where it's like you get to see how they live, but you never sympathize with them, obviously. Because the way, what makes this film so powerful and so brilliant is just how passive they are towards the violence going on uh, inside the concentration camps right outside of their backyard. Like, for instance, I don't want to give too many of the interactions away, but there's a pool party sequence, and you're just watching these kids and, and you know some of the neighbors having a good time, and then you just see the smoke coming out of the gas chambers in the background, and it is just absolutely horrifying to even think about. And yet again, it's captured so beautifully on screen that uh, you really feel the full effect of every single frame in this movie. And Sandra Huller in this is really great as Hedwig Haas, the wife of Rudolf Haas, who, I mean, what a year she's been having. My goodness, I didn't get a chance to see Anatomy of a Fall at TIFF, but uh, I am going to check it out as soon as it comes out. But uh, also Kristen uh, Friedel is, is great in this as well as uh, Rudolf Haas. Uh, and just some of the things, like it isn't like an absolute showcase for acting as more it is uh, a showcase for the filmmaking. But my goodness, you really see the way these two react to certain situations happening within the concentration camp and outside of it. And to me, their actions and implications are really the most horrifying part of the whole film. Like, how they react uh, to certain situations is really what makes this film such a powerful watch. And really just gets under my skin, no pun intended. Um, I just think that this is absolutely uh, beyond moving. And it's a film that sticks with you so so much because the ending of this movie was when I first saw it I was a bit split on it like as it was happening because one thing I will say um, I think why I said I was thought this was the best movie of the year for three quarters of it after a certain thing happens I feel like the movie kind of slows down a bit and it's not as interesting or engaging uh, but when you get to that ending and you see like I don't want to give it away, obviously, because it's something that is going to be widely discussed after the film is released and analysis videos on YouTube or whatever. Maybe I'll even do one. I don't know if I feel compelled to. But just the implications of that ending really just to make you keep thinking and thinking and thinking because although this might not be my absolute number one favorite film of the festival, it's easily the one I've thought about the most that just plays uh, out in my mind and especially that ending is just so so incredible uh, but I really think this should get nominated for so many things because I was mentioning in my holdovers review uh, there were a, there was another Oscar player uh, at the festival and I think this uh, definitely well I don't want to say definitely but I think it should absolutely be nominated for best picture uh, best director hell I would even put Jonathan Glazer above Christopher Nolan. I, I know, as crazy as it is, I think this is the best directed movie uh, coming out in 2023. And I also think it should get... It could get an adapted screenplay nomination. I wouldn't be too hurt if it wouldn't because it's not very dialogue heavy. It's all about the directing uh, and the cinematography more than anything. But obviously cinematography, obviously score for sure. 
I really, and editing too, is one of the best edited films. The sound, the, the viscerality of it all, the way they utilize sound effects to heighten uh, the emotions and the situations in this film is really what uh, sticks with you more than anything. So I think it is going to get in the best picture, uh, if I had to guess, and I definitely think Glazer will get a best director nomination. But it's crazy to think like how worried I was going into this movie, uh, how much I'd like it. Because to be honest with you, I think I like this movie more than Oppenheimer. <laughs> like, I'm serious, you know? And I think it's crazy to have these two films come out in the same year. Uh, two sides of uh, World War II, both on a different token and very, very different approaches to the subject matter. I think this will make a very interesting and depressing uh, double feature but uh, one that I definitely think will uh, play out this award season and onward. This is a very, very important film. And one, I can't say that I'm very excited to, to go back and rewatch it. Uh, but when it comes out into a theater near me, I'm definitely going to check it out again. Because, yet again, this one I think I could raise my rating on as well. Because this is one of the absolute most sublime, most effective most harrowing, uh, as I said, most important movies of the year. There's no doubt this is going to be another film that will be in my top 10 of the year for sure. And uh, one that I am excited to revisit and uh, appreciate more on rewatch because maybe there will be things that I, uh, you know, pick up on. Because also, I mean, it doesn't help that I was like watching this at 10 p.m. at night. Not that I was tired, but you know, I, I would definitely like to watch it earlier in the day at where I'm more energized and where I can, you know, fully take in uh, the film itself and not have to go back and forth to all these screenings. But yeah, really, I, I think this is an incredible, incredible achievement. Uh, I wish I could have stuck around for the Q&A, but I had to bounce out of there. Um, before the time Jonathan Glazer finished with what he was saying. But uh, I want to thank you for this film. If you happen to stumble across this, this really is just one of the greatest cinematic achievements of 2023. And I'm going to give The Zone of Interest a 9 out of 10. Yet again, I mean, there are hardly any misses uh, from this festival. And the ones that I wasn't huge on... You know, uh, we'll get to them later down the line, but this was certainly not one of them. Uh, I'm going to be thinking about this movie for a long, long time. Just an absolute, once again, cinematic achievement like no other this year. And yeah, guys, that's my review for Zone of Interest. So if you saw it, uh, let me know what you thought about it. Is it as powerful as I'm making it out to be? Or were you perhaps bored by some of it? Uh, really, it hardly bored me. Uh, at all, and uh, yet again, I absolutely love this film, and uh, when it comes out to theaters, I know it's not going to be for everybody, but I do recommend checking it out, since it is such an important uh, piece of history, and because it's such an immaculately uh, well-made film, and of course, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't been here already, uh, going to be, have a few more reviews coming from Tiff, and then some onwards, but my next video is going to be very, very special, because I plan on doing a review of Christopher Nolan's, uh, speaking of him, or once again in this video, The Dark Knight for the 15th anniversary of the film. Cannot wait to talk about one of my favorite movies with you guys once again. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.